Hey, I'm Dr. Terence Espinosa. This video is an introduction to the Hebrew vowel system. Vowels were always part of spoken Hebrew, but they weren't always written down. The earliest texts we have preserve just consonants, not vowels, and modern Hebrew carries that tradition on as well, with the majority of Hebrew texts just containing consonants, not vowels. Now, when vowels are printed, and certainly the system that's used in Hebrew Bibles, that vowel system was developed by the Masoretes. They were a group of, of scribes, scholars who worked in Tiberias, Galilee in the last third of the first millennium AD, so roughly 700 to 1100 AD. There were other systems that were in place, other systems that represented vowels, and so this isn't the first or the only, but it's the, the, the final system that became fixed in the system that we use today. So this, the story goes much further than this, but we're using the Masoretic uh, pointing system. Now, the system doesn't want to move consonants around, so uh, vowels are represented by dots and dashes that are written beneath and in between the consonants of the Hebrew text. So because of that, this vowel system is sometimes called the Masoretic pointing system, or it's called the Nikud, or it's just called dots and dashes more colloquially. Now, if you're looking at a Hebrew Bible, there are other dots and dashes and marks around the text that aren't vowels. And so my best advice, if you're learning Hebrew, is to ignore those for now. Uh, really focus on just the vowels. And as you're comfortable with vowels and can read a printed Hebrew text, then you can slowly learn the other marks that will help you with the reading. But just don't be overwhelmed or be surprised if you look at a Hebrew Bible and there are a lot more lines and dots and things that aren't vowels. That's, that's typical and you'll just get used to that. Uh, so let's get right into the, this video here. Uh, we're going to show you this chart. So this is an overview of the Hebrew vowel system, and after we go over this briefly, then we'll go over the vowels one by one, and we'll, we'll uh, talk about how to pronounce them, how they sound, uh, and other characteristics of them. So this chart you read right to left, A-E-I-O-U, uh, but vowels in Hebrew say A-E-I-O-U, which is familiar to other languages as well, A-E-I-O-U. So you read right to left. Uh, the, the, uh, there is another debate, too, whether the Hebrew had five vowels or seven vowels or three vowels. And so we're going with the kind of the five-vowel system. This is the tradition that was handed down to me that I learned, and so now I pass it on to you. Though I fully recognize if you want to go much further in Hebrew studies, you will have to revisit how you refer to your vowels. But for now, this is a good uh, teaching device, a good way to get at it. Uh, and so have a look at, at the marks. Now, the dotted circle, that's just... Um, if it were math, it'd be an X. It's whatever consonant uh, belongs there, would go there. It's just a space holder showing you where the vowels are written. And most of them are written, as you see, either beneath or, or next to the, the Hebrew consonants. There are a couple we'll get to in the O and U column. Even Well, the top row also involves actual consonants. We'll get to that in a moment. The fuller version of the chart, here it is. Uh, this gives you the name of each vowel, gives you a, a mnemonic for how to pronounce each vowel, and in general, the well, all of them, the way you pronounce the vowel is contained in the name. So comets, if you can find comets there, it's in the A column. Comets makes an ah sound. Patah, beneath it, makes an ah sound as well. So if you learn the names, uh, then you'll be fine from pronunciation. The syllable preference there isn't fixed, uh, and there is some discussion of whether this is the best way of thinking about it, it's certainly useful for me and how I teach it uh, to help bring some organization to, to learners of Hebrew. But again, if you find other methods for organizing your vowels, use those instead. The general rule on this chart, though, is the higher up a vowel is on the chart, the, the longer you'll hold, hold the duration of the sound. There is some other variation, but for now, the chart is just a, a length. So as the vowels get lower on the chart, you pronounce them more briefly. So let's go with comets, the A-class vowel. There's no unchangeable long form of the comets A-class vowel. That's intentionally blank. But the long uh, box there, uh, comets, you say father, ah, comets, ah, father. Patah, ah, father. So comets, ah, patah, ah. It's a subtle difference, and it it's pronounced the same functionally. But in theory, there was a difference in length. There's probably a difference in timber as well. But for us, again, for learners, we'll simplify it and just refer to this as a length chart. Hatef patach, beneath that, that's a shortened form where you'd say, uh, uh, it's, it's almost a glottal stop. Uh, if you say the word amuses in English, for example, amuses the first A, the, uh, that's, that's what hatef patach sounds like. So going from comets down to hatef patach, you go ah, ah, ah. That's the lengthening and shortening of the A-class vowels. Now, eventually, all Hebrew vowels can reduce all the way down to schwa, which is also an, an uh sound. Uh, uh, 
So the word about, for example, or other other words, where it's, it's, there's no almost no phonetic value at all. And so every vowel, A, E, I, O, U, the A, E, E, O, U vowels, they can all be reduced down to that schwa, which means they lose their distinguishing characteristic, how they originally sounded. As we get into Hebrew further, you'll learn that vowels vary. So if you're learning words, learn the consonantal root. The consonants won't change. The vowels will change, and they generally uh, lengthen or shorten uh, based on this chart here. So that's why it's helpful as you learn Hebrew to at least start with a chart like this before you break out into your own system. Okay, so that's the chart. Uh, here we go. Three ways of Hebrew vowels by class, by sound, and then with, with mem, uh, with m, and so that'll help us pronounce the vowels. So by class, by which I mean A class, E class, I class, O class, and U class, A, E, E, O, U. Let's start with comets. Comets, again, A, as in father. Now, it's, it's a little T. The font here, and there, there's precedent for this, but the, the vertical stroke looks like it's a teardrop. That's not always written down. Often fonts just have it like a little T with no teardrop at the end. Um, so this font uses that. You don't have to reproduce that when you write the vowels. You can write a little T, and that'll be fine for your comments. Patach. Patach also says ah, as in father. And it's just that horizontal line there. Hatef patah. Ah, ah. That's the sound that that makes. And it's both that line of the patah with the two dots of the schwa. Joined together like this, uh, it makes an uh sound. And so it's a very, very short sound. So that's the A-class vowels. Now let's go to E-class vowels. Sere yod. Sere yod. Sere is the uh, two dots. Those, those are the two dots there beneath the dotted circle. The two dots are the sere. The yod is our consonant, the, which we learned in the alphabet video, makes a ya sound. Ya, all right, yod. Yeah, but when it's joined with a sere here, um, I've imagined that they're both sticky and they stick together and now the form is slightly different. It's not a ya. The, the ya part of the yod is gone. The yod functions purely as a vowel here and it makes a sound, a, a. Um, so sere yod, an E-class vowel, says a. Bit confusing for English speakers who make a say a, but Sarah Yod uh, says A, and in the mnemonic there, they, T-H-E-Y, we do have that in English too. So the E-Y in the word they is a helpful way to remember that Sarah Yod and E-class vowel plus Yod together make an A sound. Now Sarah, Sarah, there are two schools of thought here. Uh, Sarah also makes an A sound just by itself, no Yod, uh, it can say A. In modern Hebrew, it, has, uh, it sounds like uh, eh. It makes an eh sound. So if you're learning Hebrew in a context where seres make an eh sound, go with an eh. That's fine. And even those of us who teach classical Hebrew, there are two schools of thought as well on whether we want to teach sere as making an a eh sound or seres making an eh sound. I've tried them both, and it's less confusing to make your seres say a eh because, we'll go back of the slide, sereot also says a. Eh. So if you associate the a eh sound with sere, uh, you're set. But if you disagree or have other reasons for making your seres make an eh sound, that's fine too. I won't ask you about that. But for us, for now, seres say a. Eh. Segol. Segol. Segol, again the name, says eh. Eh. As in the word better. Eh. Segol. Eh. Hatef segol. Hatef segol. Those are the three dots of the segol. Just to go back one slide. Three dots in that arrangement makes an eh sound. It's called a segol. If you take those three dots in that arrangement and add a schwa, a two dot uh, right in front of it, they form what's called a hatef segol. So this is the form, hatef segol, and it makes another barely um, pronounced sound, eh, 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 which sounds like the other hatef vowels if you go back to the first chart. They all pretty much sound the same. If you wanted to have some kind of consonantal difference or some, well, excuse me, some other difference in sound, then think of the hatef segol making the E sound as in finger, finger. Uh, uh. All right, uh, hirik yod, I class. Go back to the I class vowels. Hirik yod, hirik yod is probably how I should say it, although I still anglicize to hirik. Uh, e, a hirik yod makes an E sound. So hirik yod makes an E sound, E. 
And so in the word machine, the I in machine, that's the sound that hedic yod makes, E. And like the seriod, the hedic yod, the hedic is the single dot here. And when there's a yod that follows, it's usually because they've joined together and uh, the yod has lost its ya sound, lost the Y sound associated with it. And the hedic yod just says E. Hedic yod, E. Hedic. Hedic, another I-class vowel, also makes an E sound, like in the word machine. Uh, Hedic, I-class vowel, makes an E sound. Uh, going to the O-class vowels now, holum vav, or holum wow, if you call vavs wows, and that's fine. A uh, holum vav is how I will refer to this. It's a holum. A holum is a, a single dot that is above the consonants, that's, the, that's where the holum is generally placed. And when it's placed above a vav, the vav loses its v value, or the wa wow loses its wa value, and it's just pronounced as o. So a holum on top of a vav makes an o sound, o. This is an o sound. Holum vav. Now holum, You'll see here, it's not directly above the, where the consonant would be. The holum, when it's by itself over everything other than a vav, it's going to be above it, but a little to the left of the consonant. That's the proper placement of, of a holum. And holum just by itself makes an O sound. So we'll go back a slide to look at holum vav, O, holum, O. They both make an O sound. Kamet hatuf. Now this one is used less than 5% of the time, even less than that in the Hebrew Bible. It looks just like a comets, and if you see it, you're gonna pronounce it as a comets until you hear the word pronounced differently, and then you'll think, oh right, there is a version of the, of the comets, it's called comets hatuf, and it makes an O sound. Uh, why are things this way? The story is much longer than we care to talk about now, but uh, if you see this symbol, the little T uh, underneath the uh, consonant, then just pronounce it as an ah. And uh, very rarely, with words like chokmah or kol, it'll be o. Oh. But you memorize the words and you're fine. So while this kamet hatuf is a, a sound that this shape can make, an o sound, uh, it's not very common. And if it's overly confusing because you learn a lot of new things already, you can ignore it with an asterisk and come back to it later because uh, it's rarely ever used. Hatef kamets. So a tef comments, this is an O class vowel is reduced all the way to make an uh sound. So the word vision, vision, we don't say vision uh, in English anyway, uh, we say vision often. And the, uh, that's what the, the hatef comments sounds like. Uh. So really all the hatef vowels, the, the reduced vowels, uh, they, they all basically make the same sound, which is a, a glottal pause. Uh, if you want to have a different mnemonic for each one based on the A class, uh, E class, and O class, you have them here on the screen. <laughs> uh, shurik, let's go to U class. Speaking of U class, let's go to uh, this. Uh, shurik is a vav with a dot in the middle. And when you see this, this uh, shape, it will make an oo sound, as in the word flute. So shurik, oo, flute. Now this one will get confused with a holum vav, which is a dot above a vav. And the way I talk about it in class is if you say you boxed or did some kind of fighting, not you know for fun, not to really hurt someone. If you're hit in the stomach, uh, you make you say ooh ooh, which is what happens when this little dot inside of a vav it makes an ooh sound, like it just got hit in the stomach with with a fist or a soccer ball or something like that. Uh, and they're fine. The vav is fine. Uh, if the if the dot is above the vav. It's looking in the sky saying, oh, look at that, oh. And so the difference of a holum vav and a shurik is where the dot is placed. When the dot is inside the vav like this, it makes an oo sound. When the dot is above the vav, it makes an o sound. And it's a different letter when it's a holum vav. Okay, kibbutz, kibbutz. This is also an oo sound. It's one of the rarer vowels. We see it, not a lot, but we do see it. And it's three dots but they're not in an upside down pyramid shape. They are in this slant shape here, the slanted shape here. Uh, it's kibbutz, makes an oo as in flute sound. And schwa, schwa. Now schwa makes either an uh sound, the uh, or it's silent, you don't say it at all. And there are rules for it, your class will cover it when you get there. Uh, and so for us, for now, the best thing is to make an asterisk, noting that this can be just a silent letter, a placeholder, or if it is pronounced, 
uh, you must make it say, uh, uh. it's just a pause in your throat when you're reading. Uh. All right, so that is the Hebrew vowels uh, by, by class. Now we'll talk about Hebrew vowels by sound. Which, sounds, which vowels make an ah sound as in father? Well, there you have it, kamets and patah. How about a as in the word they? Sereod and sere, say a. Eh, which sound makes the eh sound? Which vowel makes the eh sound? The sagol makes an eh sound. Now how about e, as in the word machine? E, well, that's a hedic yod and a hedic both make an e sound. These are the I class vowels that make an e sound. There is holom vav and holom and kametz hatuf, the rarely used vowel. Uh, they make an O sound as in whole. And while originally, if you're thinking back to the chart, you may pronounce them differently, uh, practically speaking, they just make the same sound, especially now as you work on your Hebrew, it's okay to think of them as the same sound. And then as you become more conversant in Hebrew, you might you know, try and have a difference, but really it's not, at least in, in my classes, it's not a big deal to pronounce them all the same way. It's probably easier that way and more efficient, let's say. Uh, Shurik. Shurik and kibbutz both make an oo sound. Oo. Let's go back one. Holom vav. You see the holom vav there? The dots above the, the vav and it makes the vav say, oh, look at that. Oh, what's above my head? Oh, it's a dot. And then when the dot is inside, it goes, ooh, ooh, man, got hit in the gut. Ooh, that's the sound of, of uh, shurik. Okay, now, uh, in the earlier slides, we called them Hatef Patah, Hatef Sagol, and Hatef Kametz, and that's fair. And uh, we call them compound schwas, are referred to as that sometimes. Uh, reduced vowels is another way to refer to these vowels. And they all sound like this. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, they're, they're, they're just barely longer than a schwa, if at all. And then schwa. Uh, either makes an uh sound or it's silent. You skip right over it. All right, so let's do some practice. Uh, let's put these vowels around the consonant mem. So, ma, mi, mu, me, mo. Uh, what does that sound like to you? Ma. So you read the consonant first and read the vowel second. So when you're reading a line, you start in the consonantal text and then you read what's beneath it and that's the, that's the syllable you make. So, ma. How about this? How would this sound to you? Me. Me. Hmm. How would you pronounce that? It's a holum after a mem. Mo. Mo. And this, this sounds like ma. Ma. Meh, meh. Hmm, three dots in a line. Kibbutz, what does that sound like? Kibbutz, ooh, moo, moo, moo. This is a hedic, that helps. Me, me. Okay, now uh, this one is the, the rarely used one. It's not the ah, it's the o. Oh, so you'd say mo, mo. All right, what is this? This is a mem and has a single dot beneath it and a yod next to it. When you're reading this, the yod is part of the vowel. So it's joined with a single dot beneath it. The yod doesn't make a ya sound anymore. You would pronounce this on the screen as me. Me. Now, when I write two ways of saying it, it sounds the same. It's just that you might prefer writing that mnemonic one way or the other, whatever makes sense to you. But they're both the same sound. They're not two pronunciations of this. It always says me. Hmm. Now, this one is a little debatable. Uh, we're going with may. If you, well, this one is may with the yod. Uh, the next, well, let's come back to a, another one without the ode. That could be me or meh. But what's in front of you is not that at all. What's in front of you is a mem plus a vav, and there's a dot above it. That dot's a holum. What does that sound sound like when there's a dot above a vav? 
o, right? So together you'd say mo, mo. Mm, dot inside. Ooh, ooh, moo, moo. That's a that's a shurik there, moo. So this is a vocalized schwa. You would say meh, meh, meh. This vowel, reduced vowel, ma. Now you could say meh as well. You said ma, that's fine. Or ma, ma, ma. Same sound. You could say meh with a slight e to it, but it, the pronunciation is subtle, and usually it all sounds the same when you get to these reduced vowels. Mo. Yeah, there you are. So if you're if you're wondering if you should pronounce these three differently, uh, ask your professor or the community that you're with, and otherwise pronounce them all the same, and it's fine. So one more time, here's a big picture chart. Now we've gone through the vowels one by one. Here is where they fall on the chart. A a e o u u u a e i o u. Reading right to left. The higher up they are on the chart, the longer you would hold the sound. The lower they are on the chart. The lower, uh, the shorter you'd hold the sound. Uh, the blank spots are intentional, uh, so you only have two I class vowels, but four E class vowels and three A class vowels. That's as part of the vowel system. Uh, it'd be nice if they're all filled in, or if they're a different way of doing it. But this is, uh, to me, the best way of working at it for now to get some some um, perspective on the big picture of the Hebrew vowels. So uh, that's it. Thanks for playing. Thanks for learning and watching, and uh, we'll talk to you later.